All right, welcome back. This is the next in a series of videos that show you how to self-host large language models at home. In this video, we're gonna look at how to add web search to your self-hosted model, so let's jump in. And if you're new here, hi, this is Sonoran Tech, where we cover a wide range of tech topics from hardware to home labs to coding and current events. If you like the, the content, please hit the sub button and leave a comment to let me know what other topics you're interested in seeing. So, so far we've set up three things with our self-hosted LLM configuration. First, we set up a Llama and open a web UI, which you can see in front of us, to self-host various large language models with a web-based chat interface. So basically we replicated ChatGPT at home and kept it simple. And then from there, we added our own data to the mix and showed how to build the knowledge base of our own documents and then use the LLM to ask questions about those documents. And so in this next video, we're gonna add web search to the equation. And so large language models are trained on a set of data and that's really the entire universe of what they know. They're not up to date with current events like news, weather, et cetera. And given that the largest models take weeks to train and cost hundreds of millions of dollars in compute time, spending that time to train on the latest gossip columns probably isn't smart business. So adding web search is the next best thing. And this is basically exactly what we did when we added our own document knowledge base. We'll configure a search engine and the results will be converted to an embedding format and included with our query behind the scenes. So let's get it configured, it's very simple. So we're gonna start on actually the documentation for Open Web UI and they support a bunch of different search engines. So you can see here they support Seer, uh, Search API, Google PSC API, and a whole bunch of others. Actually, there are some that are coming soon. If you want to be really private, you can kind of go down the SEER route and run your own SEER uh, Docker. And this will, it's basically a layer over a bunch of other search engines that anonymizes your queries, etc. So maybe we'll look into setting that up on its own another time. And there are actually plenty of other videos on how to self-host this uh, on your home lab. But we're going to keep it simple for today just to show you how to connect into Open Web UI. And we're going to do that using Brave. And as you can see here, basically, you add one block to your uh, Docker Compose setup. And by the way, this block is not correct. So I will show you how to do it the right way. Now, the one thing you're gonna need for this is you will need an API key from Brave. And you can go over to the Brave site right here. You can create an account and you can get a free uh, plan. And basically for free, you get one query per second and up to 2000 queries a month. And that is good enough for setting this up and seeing how it works. Now, the one thing to remember is when you create the Brave account on here and you sign up for the free plan, you will need to put in uh, a credit card. So if that makes you uncomfortable, there are various ways out there to put in a, a virtual credit card number that you can go cancel if you're not comfortable with it. But uh, it took me about five minutes to get set up with Brave, set, uh, get an account and get an, I, an API key. So once you have your Brave API key, what you're gonna do is come over to your Docker configuration. And remember when we set up the initial configuration of this, we set it all up in Portainer. So I went to Portainer, I opened up my stacks and I found my stack for Open Web UI. And I went to the editor tab to see the configuration here. And what I did is I basically copy and pasted this from the Open Web UI website and then found out it didn't work. What you want to do is you're going to want to paste this in and you're going to need to make a couple changes. So first of all, make sure uh, the value true is in quotes, and then you will obviously need to paste in your API key from Brave, and then you can configure these parameters based on what you want. So the default web search result count is three. And so this, it'll query like three sites. And when we look at the results of this, you may, this may be something you want to play with to get better results. The other thing I changed. So if you look at the recommended configuration, it says web search concurrent requests is 10 is the value they gave. I set this as zero because when I looked at the Brave free plan, it basically said one query per second. And I kind of picture this thing sending off like 10 queries uh, in parallel and getting a bunch of errors. So just to keep it simple, I set this to one, give it a try and your mileage may vary on this. And so this is all you need to do is so drop this in and then update the stack and then we'll jump over to the open web ui to show you how that works all right so we have updated our docker stack and redeployed it so in theory this should be all great so we're back at the open web ui so what we'll do is just to confirm this we're going to go back into the settings and we will look at the admin settings 
and in admin settings, you can click on web search and here you go. So you can see web search is enabled. Brave is selected as the search engine. And you can see the parameters I passed in in the uh, Docker stack are just moved over right here. Now, I think you can uh, go set this up directly from the UI. I, I haven't tried it, so I just went through the Docker Compose configuration. I felt like that was super easy. So that should be it. So let's, uh, let's see how this works. So we'll come back and we'll start a new chat and I'm gonna go with the Gemma model. Now, to use the web search, you actually have to click on more and select to use web search. Otherwise the results won't be included in your query. So we will do that. And we're gonna try something, uh, try some like current events. So what I'll do is um, I'll say, what is the weather in New York for the next 10 days? And you can see it running the search right here. Now, don't be surprised if it's slow. Again, uh, we had a free API key and I only set Remember one uh, concurrent query and you can see it search three sites. And what's interesting is see, actually the results are, are not good. So I don't know what's going on there. I actually tried this previously and it worked just fine. So let's try this. What is the other in New York City right now? Okay, there you go. This first result, it was a little odd, but here search three sites. There you go. And you can actually see it kind of search re like reasonable sites, Manhattan, New York weather, and you could go open either of these. So let's just go do this for fun and see what it did. And you can see the current temperature in New York is 53 degrees and it is sunny. So if we go over here, I'm kind of curious. Okay, it says 53 degrees. So there you go. A uh, simple example of how it integrated the search results uh, from Brave and then formatted them and displayed them here. Now let's try something interesting because it's like, yay, it queries some uh, uh, websites and then summarized it into a sentence. So I'm curious if we can get a nice formatted result because you know, if you're looking at the weather, sometimes it's nice to have a table of what's going on. So let's try this. So let's say, show me a table of the weather in Phoenix for the next week. Now, I will tell you I did this before and it worked pretty well. So we'll see if it, uh, if it can replicate those results again. Not bad. Right, and it, so again, it searched three sites. Remember, you could configure this and have it search a whole bunch of more sites, especially if you have a better API key. So here you go, uh, that is a reasonable table of the weather uh, in Phoenix. Now, I tried something interesting and this kind of shows the limits of large language models. If you say like, here you have a data table and imagine now I actually want to do some math on that table and say like to calculate the average. So using the table above, calculate the average temperature for the next week. Now you can see what's interesting here is I basically said do math on this table and it jumps in and it searches different websites. How to calculate the average. So it's interesting, what did it search? So it summed the highs, 72, 68, 69, 69. That looks pretty good. I'm not gonna verify the math, divide by seven. Not bad, that's impressive. I'm actually, I'm surprised it did this because when I went over this before, it did not actually do the math based on the data table. What it did was it just searched, like tell me the average temperature and it came up with a value that was completely wrong. I think it just speaks to understanding the limits of large language models and how they work. But that was pretty cool. So let's, let's try something a little different now so that's uh that's doing the weather let's try the news right and so again we have to make sure web search is updated and let's generate a summary of the top five news stories for today that is interesting so the provided context is about the top 10 it can't provide a summary of the top five that's kind of silly okay provide a summary of the top 10 and no it says now it's searching for top 10 news stories of 2024 i don't want that i said today and here well here it said december 8th do you see these queries are weird this one is probably okay the text only mentions the ongoing ai wave see here's what i was expecting actually if you're looking at the news today the whole situation in syria is really top of the news so i was expecting to see something like that probably comes back to prompt engineering and how to ask the right question. Let's try this. What are top news stories today? Interesting, huh? So it's it says, I do not have access to real-time information when actually it queried CNN. What are the top news stories on CNN? Not that impressive. Maybe there are ways to tweak this behind the scenes to make it better, like altering what sites are queried, how many queries uh, happen, etc. Well, there you go. So finally, I got what I was expected, right? This is what I thought I would see, but I had to get very specific about asking for a particular news site. So it looked at Twitter, YouTube, etc. 
Okay, got it up and running, similar to our previous ones. I'm like, look, it took all of five minutes to do this, and that's pretty darn impressive for five minutes of work, and you could tweak it from there. But I want to try one other example, and I want to try an example more around a, a knowledge question, not a current events question. So I was sitting on a plane the other day, and I'm staring out the window, I'm looking at the wing, and the wing was like super dirty. You know, there was oil streaks coming back from the, the leading edge slats, and I was like, it was a Delta plane and I'm not picking on Delta, but they're painted white. So you, you see the dirt pretty easily. And I was, I was sitting on the plane. I was like, I wonder how often they wash these things. And so I, I actually opened up chat GPT on my phone and asked the question, but I'm going to ask it here and I'm going to leave web search enabled for this. So let's see what happens. So how often are airplanes washed? So report washing every two to six months, often in line with the A or B check maintenance schedule. I'll tell you this was not nearly as good as the answer I got uh, out of ChatGPT, but here's what's interesting is let's try this again, but let's turn off web search. And so that'll just force it to answer based on the knowledge the model was trained on. Now this is really interesting because look at this. So we turned off web search. So this is just answered based on the training set of the Gemma model, which is a pretty large model. And you can see that it is providing much more context and information, not a ton more, but in this case, using the web search actually detracted from it. Now, I, it would be interesting to dig into why, and I, I don't know the exact reason because we searched these three sites and I'm sure this information, like I said, was uh, embedded and passed in with my query but it's almost like the model then restricted its output very strictly based on the, Im the inputs of these sites. And, and I don't really know. We could probably go into the open web UI and look at that configuration. I wasn't planning on doing it uh, today, but let's just take a quick look. Cause I think if you go in here and you go to documents, I would be willing to bet you could play around with this template and maybe tweak some of these rules to change the output. We'll leave that as an exercise to the reader, but here we go. What we'll do is we will wrap it up for now. I just wanted to kind of show you just another step you can add and another set of features you can add to your self-hosted LLM configuration by bringing web search into the equation. As you can see, it, it's really easy to set up, it worked, but it definitely will require some tweaking to get very high quality results with that. So we will leave it here. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and we'll see you next time.